Hello everyone, my name is Anne Selberg and I work for AfricaAid and today I'm very happy and honoured to have the opportunity to share about our viral load quality improvement project for children, adolescents and young people living with HIV and sharing our experiences from Zimbabwe January to March 2020. So through the session I'll go through the background, an overview of the Shandiri program, how we selected our sites, viral load deep dive, viral load quality improvement and way forward. So the Africa Shandiri model is built uh, on CATS, community adolescent treatment supporter who are HIV positive, 18 to 24 year olds, young people living with HIV who serve as a linkage between the community and the health facility for children, adolescents and young people living with HIV. So uh, last year we uh, analyzed our uh, Q3 performance and we could see that the adolescents and young people and, uh, were lagging behind in terms of viral load suppression and viral load coverage. So we decided to select one highly performing sites and seven low performing sites and implement a viral load quality improvement project. So um, uh, we extracted the programmatic data and we found the best performing site was uh, Chilocha District Hospital. We had 91% viral load coverage and 94% suppression rate. And then we selected seven sites from Shimba and Goromonsi that had 18 to 26% viral load coverage and 53 to 68% suppression rates. Uh, our methods that we developed was to have on-site discussions, interviews and observations, meeting with Ministry of Health at district level and site level, in-depth interviews with key staff members, observations of CATS home visits, focus group discussions with children, adolescents and young people living with HIV. So the best practices that were highlighted by the uh, staff at uh, Chilocha District um, uh, Hospital were teamwork, that they divided the responsibility for the different registers and they collaborated to ensure that several staff could participate on the adolescent days. Also provision of adolescent uh, friendly services, use of adolescent friendly language, patient kind and caring attitudes, and provision of combined art refill, viral load beading and support group module during a Saturday. And then actively using data for program development and improvement and developing a viral load QI plan, an active follow up and revision of that plan if need be. So this is what we saw when we came into the OI department. As you can see, they've done a fishbone analysis, problem analysis, they developed specific activities and they even had a run chart where they had uh, monthly targets and they were reviewing their outcomes for this target. So this is what we found when we went for home visits with the cats. The client said, when I have a problem, I talk to my friend and they indicated the cats. They also said, it was nice to go to a support group because you feel like you're a part of a family. I just felt so happy and free. It's even better than being at home. Have a lot of friends there now, have gotten used to them. The topics are quite interesting, the way we are discussing it. It is easy to understand. I've been three years at the clinic. They are fast and they don't harass anyone. They do their things on time. And this is an example of what the cats were saying to the caregiver of a client to encourage him to support the client to take his ARVs. If you take your pills well, no one can see that you have HIV. If you don't take them well, everyone can see. And the cats indicated uh, herself as an example of that. We also interviewed the OI nurse at Chilotra District Hospital. She said, we talked to the adolescents and young people and they wanted to be seen during the weekend. A lot will be going on during the week. If the parents see them, then there will be a lot of talks. Us as OI department, we have monthly discussions regarding the viral loads and new registrations. For example, if we have an increase in the number of high viral loads, then we try to find out why we try to find the cause. There was a month when we noted that we had lots of children with high viral loads, so we invited the caregivers to come for a discussion. This other boy, seven years, his grandmother goes to South Africa and leaves the boy behind. Another had stopped taking medications because of exams. And finally, they are taking our service as well. We know because they will come for appointments even if it's not their review date. Then we also did focus group discussions with adolescents living with HIV. They said, we work well with the cats. They talk like friends and we discuss issues and we share. The cats can spend the whole day at my place if she's not coming to work. We are just talking about life. And then about the healthcare workers. They are just like your friends. We discuss issues freely. And she asked me how I take the medicines, if we have any side effects, and they explain clearly why we shouldn't stop taking the medications. Sometimes they even put the adolescents in front of the adults and serve them first. So after this, we went on with the viral load quality improvement process and we developed a rigorous system of evaluating viral load monitoring at health facility level, including review of tracking registers to see if those in need of adherence counseling and viral load were tracked, 
review of viral load registers to see if they were bleeding enough to reach their uh, annual targets, review of patient files to see if they had a valid viral load result and if they were booked for adolescent days, and review of high viral load registers to evaluate for any delays and quality of services delivered. What we could see was that the majority of them didn't know how many adolescents they had at their sites. They also had uh, um, uh, the review of the green files. We could see that many of them were not booked for adolescent days. And from the high viral load register, we could see that some sites had very good quality of care while others were lacking and there were some considerable delays. So this is how we develop our viral QI plans, including uh, aims, objectives and specific activities. And uh, we wanted to line list the clients who are due for viral load bleeding, mobilizing them for viral load bleeding, weekly follow up with lab, engaging district medical officer regarding delays, case conferences for adolescents with high viral load. And we also wanted all relevant cadres to participate in the adolescent. And this was the outcome after six weeks. As you can see, we moved from being in red to being in green and yellow. So out of the 596 uh, uh, adolescents that participate in the viral load QI exercise, uh, 30, uh, 224 were bled for viral load. So we went from 38% coverage to 80% coverage. When it comes to valid viral load, we went from 38% to 69%. And number with suppressed viral load, we went from 45% to 79%. So as a way forward, we recommend documentation of best practices and sharing with relevant stakeholders training up all staff in quality improvement process, cascading the viral load quality improvement process to all other Africade supported districts and engaging key stakeholders for joint ownership of the quality improvement targets and goals. Our experience was that this was very successful for improving viral load monitoring of adolescents. Thank you very much.